Halito. Blessings, Yukala. Halito, Chimachukma. Chiholi to everyone out there. Love and light. Halito, everyone. It's the Luka Copper Empress. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Y'all know how we do. We gonna play a couple of songs, and it just so happened we was only gonna do the boule stuff, but I had took me a little nap right before, and right before we were supposed to go live. And when I woke up, I woke up to some breaking news. So y'all know I gotta drop the breaking news on y'all. <laughs> Yeah. Hey man, all I'm saying is, nigga, you always got something to say. That's why you don't shut up. Uh. A lot of niggas died 1865. Single Michael Flair, how I ain't gonna let it ride. Everybody hot and black was never on your side. They do match to tell your apps where you sleep at night. Huh. They put that white man on. Got you begging them for answers like that white man know. Had you swearing you was African, that's that white man home. Had you proud to be a savage, that's that white man zone. And I ain't talking shit, this my definition. If being savage was our nation, so y'all be non existent. We'd have took your ass out when we was in them kitchens. Instead of showing you how to live and how to maintain business. White supremacy fake. Only way that shit real is if you do what they say. We the guy to the gate. So when they say they fear God, now you know what they make. Choose song, move song, choose song, move song. So the in the same room, he gon' go down. Hit a nigga with that bone, he gon' go down. Choose song, move song, choose song, move song. So the in the same room, he gon' go down. Hit a nigga with that bone, he gon' go down. Every day my niggas dying, they don't know the truth. Know the how the hell you close to God? We don't know it's you. Yo, how the hell you supposed to survive? We don't know the shoot. No, he should have died. You let him slide because he look just like you. Uh, I tried to tell him all skin ain't kin. Yeah, everybody yeah, ain't your partner. Yeah. Everybody ain't your friend. Uh, how the hell they supposed to help when they the ones that put you in? They don't struggle how we struggle. They can't get it how we live. Can't be scared to die when we already dead. Already Either dead. way, your life is safe no matter how you play. My higher self said we should choose remain godly. My lower want these motherfucking bodies. If a truck, they circles like a motherfucking oddy. Take them to the south and put them down like OG Bobby. They don't want equality in this club, they want these problems. Kill us right beside me, snap full of chicken mockers. Choose song, move song, choose song, move song. So the in the same room, he gon' go down. Hit a nigga with that bone, he gon' go down. Choose song, move song, choose song, move song. So the in the same room, he gon' go down. Hit a nigga with that bone, he gon' go down. This is the first, uh, first time we playing this on the Matriox Express. This is Threads 3000 Down Under, and the last one was Trey Ali 1865. Have no rights to this music. All rights reserved. Mm. 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 Look, I got word for sex. I might overwork the scale. They calling my phone right now. Right now. Yes, that I treat them well. What? Really about that life. I'm talking shootouts and now. Swear that they love me. They love but they rather see you fall. It's all right with no cut, you might OD. Find out shit's out, trying to play for sweet. Riding one deep, listening in a raw tray. Try to slide out of time to hit the interstate. Who got a text to say, tell you where? Caught up and set up in motion. She said, well, hurry up again. You know I love when you stroke. Pulled up about an hour later. Now the neighbors know my name. No go nowhere without the strap. Guess I'm stuck in my way. Get it how I live, babe. I 
Only fuck with wet pay. I get it how I live, babe. Only fuck with wet pay. Down up, in the gun. Where is Grammy? Hick it up. Came up, but I'm paranoid. Niggas pocket watch and keep the rocket on me. Down up, in the gun. Where is Grammy? Hick it up. Came up, but I'm paranoid. Niggas pocket watch and keep the rocket on me. Down up, in the gun. Where is Grammy? Hick it up. Down up, in the gun. Where is Grammy? Hick it up. Down up, in the gun. Where is Grammy? Hick it up. Came up, but I'm paranoid. Niggas pocket watch and keep that rocket on me. Yeah, Everybody out there hating on me, uh, ain't going nowhere, y'all waiting no on me. Hope you don't plan on taking on me. I'm sleeping on y'all, quit shaking on me. Shaking on me, y'all plotting on me. Plotting on me, y'all rotting on me. Used to be hard, turn cotton on me. Hating that snake, got nothing on me. I'm stepping out clean, my digital dirty. We bought it like Kobe, I'm 30 for 30. I come out the gutter and now I look pearly. You big mad, cause you ain't important. Last time I ate, dude, cop the eight. Do it for my state, I'm a heavyweight. Wanna make a play, can take you where I stay. I'm a Get it done, I ain't come to play. No, I'm him, ain't he me? Moving these quads like ATV. They stay plugged in like ATV. I ain't trying to be no APB. Trying to stay safe like ADT. Air pay day like ADP. Hustle up on three AMGs. Good network like AMG. Down up, in the gut. Where's Grammy? Pick it up. Down up, in the gut. Where's Grammy? Pick it up. Down up, in the gut. Where's Grammy? Pick it up. Came up, but I'm paranoid. Niggas pocket watch and keep that rocket on me. Down up, in the gun. Where's Grammy? Pick it up. Came up, but I'm paranoid. Niggas pocket watch and keep that rocket on me. Down up, in the gun. Where's Grammy? Pick it up. Came up, but I'm paranoid. Niggas pocket watch and keep that rocket on me. Down up, in the gun. Where's Grammy? Pick it up. Down up, in the gun. Where's Grammy? Pick it up. Down up, in the gun. Where's Grammy? Came up, but I'm paying no niggas pocket watch and keep that rocket on. Yeah, yes, I like yes, that. Yes, that yes. Like, yes, we yeah, three. Keep it coming. I, I am enjoying uh all of this music. Like we y'all, we really have a soundtrack for our liberation we have a soundtrack for our revolution this is history. yes, like, yes. I love it so much it's yes. so fire that's some fire shit like these brothers are definitely going to go down in history with having the with providing the music for us for our awakening to take, yes awakening and taking our damn land back yes, yes. And of course, y'all know it's a matriarch favorite, Chief hey. Kelly, anti everything. Hey, Chief Chief. How you doing? I'm proud of how black men been killed. They done put some respect on our damn name. I'm oh, from yeah. Minneapolis, Mary Fanny, White White. Yeah. Yeah. Where is he right now? Yeah. I don't want to hear your face, White White. You are back on tour, please. I swear it's back to this beat. It goes round and round and round like sorry. See the strangest things, the evil that money brings. I swear it's like a disease that goes round and round and round like sirens. And they wanna bury me while I cement everything. I swear it's like a disease that goes round and round and round like sirens. Man, I'm anti-dirty cops, anti-bullshit, I'm anti-scamming ass preachers in the pulpit, I'm anti-no truth, anti-full of lies, I'm anti-scared to try, I'm anti-scared to die, I'm anti-poverty, anti-stay the same, I'm anti-hard lies, anti-scared to change, I'm anti-pity parties, anti-excuse makers, anti-lazy niggas, anti-truth haters, anti-pray and march, I'm anti-quiet nigga, Malcolm over Martin, I ain't anti-violent nigga, anti-fake woke. Anti-unaware, I'm anti-Jesus Christ, I'm anti-church and prayer, I'm anti-false hope, anti-holy ghost, I'm anti-fairy tales, brainwashing grown folks, I'm anti-Jesus letting killers in the church house, and God ain't doing shit, we're watching as we get murked out, I'm anti-niggas too blind to open their eyes and see I'm anti-loving my enemies and apologies, I'm anti-gang.
gang bang music helping kill the youth and drug overdose music targeted to me and you i'm anti-black cops signing why they killing us and black judges hugging the killer but they ain't helping us i'm anti-scared to fight anti-scared to leave malcolm said won't be no revolution because y'all scared to bleed i'm anti no proof anti no evidence anti niggas not asking questions just me leaving shit i'm anti begging to the sky with situations all i trust and i believe in me i'm anti-belief in god i'm anti evil on this earth hating racism anti hateful whites i'm anti niggas nigga anti-genocide self-hate and suffering if it don't help to better us i'm anti everything Anti-believing the slavery stories taught in school. I'm anti that we are from Africa. Don't apply to me. I'm anti Kanye rocking our people back to sleep. I'm anti granny killers. Grandsisters had the truth. I'm anti monkey shit. I'm anti Lucy too. I'm anti letting these white folks tell me just who I am. My granny came from right here, nigga. She was an Indian. I'm anti getting scammed. Anti getting played. I'm pro genealogy. I'm anti DNA. I'm anti refusing to check in the shit that we was gave. I'm anti believing the white man in the but Granny say niggas ain't like it when Walker came dropping facts in. He said he wasn't black and he ain't African American. That's real talk, real spill, real life, real deal. I'm anti hurting us. My mission is to help kill I'm anti ignorance, anti religious shit. I'm anti cool with niggas cognitive dissonance. I'm anti lacking knowledge, put us at a disadvantage. Anti social with niggas fighting for a chicken sandwich. Anti Flint water, anti sucker shit and fuck you to them blacks that selling out for the government. I'm anti no planning, anti folks scamming, anti no will, I'm anti low standards, anti no drive, anti low lives, anti low esteem, I'm anti no pride, anti want to quit, I'm anti giving up, I'm anti niggas not helping to lift our people up, I'm anti hating niggas, anti lame niggas, anti six nine, I'm anti snake niggas, anti low vibe, live life fly high, some days it's gonna be full of rain, the other days the sun is shine. That a man was shot and killed inside the chapel at, uh, at this World Changes Church International. A man, a worker at the church, leading a prayer, opening the prayer service today. And as uh, the longtime member who talked to Karen indicated, there were a lot of people who go to that prayer service on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 10. Different people lead the service. But as he was leading the prayer at the start of the service, a man walked up to him and shot and killed him, shot him at point blank range. Halito, welcome, 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 everybody. That ending right there is like epic for me, Lyrica, because that should tell our people right there. The man right. is getting killed in the church house. Where the hell is Jesus? I, I'm just saying. <laughs> that, Jesus in the back he stealing, Jesus house he getting the back stealing the, yeah. He was in the back stealing the Eucharist. Yeah. <laughs> he was right back the at getting the money. He was back at getting the money out of the uh the collection point, I guess. No, and the kill part about it is he told the people that shot the, the, the young man that shot his his people, I forgive you. The family. I'm not doing that I forgive I'm so you. I'm tired of my people doing that. I'm so I'm, I'm sick and tired of my people. Every time something goes wrong when it comes to this government, these policemen, or just other people in general, you you don't forgive your own people, but you'll forgive them. Quick, fast, in a hurry. Right. You'll never hear me on the news saying I forgive. 
I believe in the alpha eye. That part. And all through the Bible, there's it's war. <laughs> all it's all the war. Straight war. So I'm trying to figure out why they call it the good book because everything in there is by slaughtering. It was even about his so-called Jesus being nailed to the cross. So how was that the good book? All right, I got uh, we. I'm gonna shout out the chat, and then y'all want to do the breaking news first, and then go into um the watch party. Yes. Yeah, we All need right. that breaking news first, girl. You know we know. We <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna shout out the chat. Coppertone, Maga, M I I am Reginald Jones, Ten Degrees, Ellis King, N Jones. Indians expose invest da 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 inspect the gadget da 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 da. When I seen that earlier, I bust my leg. I said, "Oh, he they done upgraded. It is investigators." Deal, Marshall, Yolanda Sanders, Matthew Simmons, Raina Leona, Hey Sis, to the Natural Peace Guy, Davina Bolden, Peace and Businesses, Yolanda Sanders, David Bell. Freeman, Huachuca, Lamar, Chata, Apache. I hope I said that right. Ivy, Comer, Freeland, Elizabeth Young, Glistens Goddess, Patrick Gabriel, Sean, Halo Brother, Inf Dot, Brown Wolf, Peace Family. Hey, Avis, hey, sis, Shalom, Zo, Peace God, to Sean, hey, brother, Sister Soul, Peace Goddess, Diva Glam, Studio Weave, Halito, sis. Chuck HRH, Big Dog Filio G, Moon Faye, Peace Goddess, Juan Torres, Mr. Dogfly Brother, Karima Shabazz, JR Niji, Hey God, Chris Jackson, Patrick Gabriel, Nicholas Fontenot. Let me make sure I got everybody. Darius Matthews, Renee Thomas, Halito Sis. Empress Awaken, Peace Goddess, Miss Lita, Dr. Baker Williams, Reading, Chief Crazy Overstanding. Uh oh, where yeah, I went? Tony Furlow, Irma Clan, War Chief, Peace God, Brandon Rogers. Let me make sure. Is that everybody? Did I get everybody? Charity Yep, I just got the hey hiker, peace God, Demetrius <laughs> Freeland. Y'all excuse me. Um Mr. Yes. Uh Truth Master Dre. Uh uh Right Woody Stay. Uh that's hiker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's hiker uh Brandon, you got Brandon Rogers. PG, peace God. Like Sister, so okay, I just saw your comment. I put that link for Chief Kelly's video in the chat. Let me know if you got it. If not, I'll send I'll send it. I'll put it in the chat again. Mine's I Honey Van Mike Princess. Uh Kwani Van. Yep, you said that. King Garfield Bogan. Hey, brother. That's my brother Ursel. Peace, Ursel. Hey Nati. It's been a while. Nati, how you been? Empress Goddess Namaste. Truth Master Dre. Progen progenitor. Smoke I think we see a new person in here that we had seen before. And to everybody who we don't miss, y'all know, charge it to our heart. I mean, our heads and not our hearts. Ten degrees. Um, I I, I don't remember ever seeing him. Welcome, welcome. You must be a new um, yeah, little Roxanne or little R Rob McCoy, peace God. Okay, so what I'm gonna go with first, I'm gonna go with. I know a lot of y'all probably didn't heard this already because now they're sharing it on mainstream news because the bitch was found guilty. But Ghislaine Maxwell was found guilty on five of the six charges that she was uh in in her, in her sex trafficking trial. Oh, that little yeah. black book, baby. Ooh, she she was got found guilty. She gonna be rat. She ratting, 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 ratting. See, this is the thing. This is the okay. I'll put the link in the chat. This is the thing. Now, what we're about mock mock your sister words, y'all. What we're about to see, it's about to be a domino effect. Now we're yes. about to see more and more people get arrested for the fuck shit that they have been doing. Yes, for this time. 
Like we really about to see what what we've been saying. Get your just have your popcorn ready and all of that. What we've been saying, get your popcorn ready for. This is why we've been saying get your popcorn ready because now they are literally about to start. We are about to start seeing, you know, seeing what's been going on behind the scenes. We about to see who's been going to tribunals. We about to see who, okay, so you got your people who say um, whose reputation is going to be kept, you know, kept up. So you'll hear like uh, either they die, like your boy, uh, what's the, what is his name? Goodness, the melanated dude, the melanated dude who just passed away supposedly from cancer, he was like number number 10 on the list. So, yeah, we know you didn't pass. Uh, we know you didn't pass by no by no damn cancer. We know your ass either got hung, poisoned, whatever, whatever they're trying to do. Oh, which one? What is his name? Hold up, hold up. Hold up. Ten four, like me who? <laughs> Let me get his name. Give me a second. Let me go. Sean, yes, real said colon cancer. Yes, Virgil Abloh. There you go, to Sean. Thank you. That's his name, at Virgil Abloh. That's his name. He was like some kind of uh, I think he was a um, what do you call it? Like a designer or something like that. And mm -hmm. he was like I said, he was like number yeah. Ch Chadwick Boseman. Well, now Chadwick, I'm gonna be honest. Since we've been uh, since we've, I think Chadwick really died from cancer because since we've been getting the intel, I have not seen his name on anything. I haven't seen Chadwick Chadwick Boseman um name on anything. Yes, Rob, he started off with Kanye. Correct. Yeah, I saw Will yes, Smith's he was name. Designer for Louis Vuitton. So I yeah, saw... that's what's, what's going to happen is they are like we really about to see what's what's been going down. Go ahead. Yeah, definitely. Me. Will Smith was on that that uh yes. plane. Yeah. Yes. So I'm gonna read a little bit of the article, y'all, and then I'm gonna drop it in the chat so y'all can read it, and then I'm gonna get to the to the next drop. Uh, Maxwell 60 convicted on five of the six charges she faced as U.S. prosecutors held verdict and say justice has been done. This article con uh, contains descriptions of sexual abuse. The British former socialite Ghislaine Maxwell was found guilty of sex trafficking in her Manhattan federal court trial on Wednesday afternoon. Maxwell 60 was arrested in July 2020, charged with involvement in ex-boyfriend Jeffrey Epstein's sexual abuse of teenage girls, some as young as 14. Maxwell was convic convicted on five of the six charges she faced. In addition to sex trafficking, Maxwell was found guilty of conspiracy to entice individuals under the age of 17 to travel in interstate commerce with intent to engage in illegal sexual activity, conspiracy to transport individuals under the age of 17 to travel in interstate commerce with intent to engage in illegal sexual activity, transportation of an individual under the age of 17 with intent to engage in illegal sexual activity and conspiracy to commit sex trafficking of individuals under the age of 18. Maxwell was found not guilty of one count enticement of an individual under the age of 17 to travel with intent to engage in illegal sexual activity. I well, how she was found not guilty of that? Because that's exactly what the bitch did. How, how she was found not guilty of that? Following the guilty verdict, Damian Williams, the Manhattan U.S. attorney, said in a statement, a unanimous jury has found Ghislaine Maxwell guilty of one of the most crimes one of the worst crimes imagine, imaginable, facilitating and participating in the sexual abuse of children, crimes that she committed with her longtime partner and co-conspirator, Jeffrey Epstein. The road to justice has been far too long, but today justice has been done. I want to commend the bravery of the girls, now grown women, who stepped out of the shadows and into the courtroom. William also said their courage, their courage and willingness to face their abuser made this case and today's result possible. As the verdict was read, Maxwell appeared to remain expressionless and looked forward when Judge Allison Nathan finished reading the verdict. Maxwell poured herself a cup of water from a bottle of water that was in front of her and took a drink. Nathan then asked jurors whether the verdict was unanimous. A microphone was passed from juror to juror who all agreed that it was. One of Maxwell's lawyers, Jeffrey 
whatever his name is, patted Maxwell on the back. After Nathan dismissed the jury, another one of the Maxwell's lawyers, Bobby Sternum, asked whether the judge could help arrange for Maxwell to get a booster shot for COVID. <laughs> when Maxwell left the courtroom, she glanced quickly at her siblings who were seated in the front row of the gallery. Maxwell faces up to 65 years in prison when sentenced. That's what I want to see. Epstein, a convicted sex offender and presumed billionaire county, Prince Andrew and former presidents Bill Clinton and Don Donald Trump as cronies before killing himself in a New York jail. That man ain't dead. Y'all stop lying to these people. He, if he is dead, he ain't kill himself. The verdict marks a dramatic conclusion to an unexpectedly fast-moving trial. Proceedings were originally expected to take at least two weeks. Prosecutor called 24 witnesses over 10 days and defense attorneys called nine witnesses over two days nine witnesses over two days prosecutors say that maxwell preyed on vulnerable young girls manipulated them and served them up to be sexually abused by epstein there were four accusers in this case jane kate carolyn who did not use their full names and annie farmer jane testified that she was 14 in 1994 when epstein started to sexually abuse her and that sometimes maxwell was present during this abuse at times, Maxwell participated in the abuse, James Jane said. There were hands everywhere, Jane recalled, of an encounter with Epstein and Maxwell. The abuse continued when she was 15 and 16. Wow. So, yeah, I'm going to read that. I mean, I'm going to put this in the chat so y'all can go and read it. Oh, she going to be Yes, Empress so. Goddess. Yes. Yeah. Him, too. Him, too. Who? Jay-Z. Oh, yes. Oh, so yes. I put that link uh in the chat. What? So yeah, yeah, Beyonce was on that that plane too. Oprah, Gail. Oh, yeah. So yeah, Freeman. His name is Prince Andrew. He's one. Yeah, he. So he 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 was extradited already. He was extradited to here already. Peace, Vaga. Yeah, he was extradited already. So. I don't even think none of these people going to jail. I think they all going to a pedophile alley and, and they're going to be still kidnapping children and sending them over to where they at. I don't where. know, Empress, because um, a lot of the, a lot like, so when, I don't know if y'all saw, there was a underground bunker that was found in New York. This was like around the time of, he's Monique Hill. Um, he is infamously awakened. Jay Z, they are definitely, you don't have to find out, brother. They are definitely a part of it. Um, yes, get all the asses. So, um, there was an underground bunker that was found, and a lot of the military who, like these, these men, grown ass men, they were really fucked up in the head about it. And there's a Y'all look up Frazzle Drip. Do not Google Frazzle Drip, though. Please do not Google it. Go on DuckDuckGo and look up Frazzle Drip. The, a lot of the New York police officers who found, who, you know, who, um, who busted Hillary and got that when they got, remember when the emails was linked? I posted that link in the chat a couple of videos ago. Y'all go back and watch one of the videos. It's uh, Wikipedia had, did a dump. But WikiLeaks did a big dump. So all of that stuff is in, yes, Juan Torres, plenty of human trafficking is still going on. Every time somebody go to jail, there's human trafficking, if we really want to talk about it. <laughs> um, Fred, but yes, look, yes, that's exactly how you spell it. Look that up. Yes, Pizzagate is definitely real. And um, what was going, so these, a lot of these, a lot of these, military people they was like man fuck that they so a lot of them went on had their own like part like i don't want to say parties but their own like they created their own secret little things to kind of combat what was going on it's called um duck it, it, search it on duck duck go and it's called frazzle drip and just type in pizza gate you just type that in and you man uh, that's why y'all got to watch the fall of the cabal. Watch the fall of the cabal because it really breaks a lot of that stuff down. It breaks a lot of that um, pizza gate and stuff, you know, a lot of that stuff down. Yeah, but WikiLeaks, let me see if I can find that because I remember, let me see if I can go oh, look. Give me a second, y'all. Okay. 
give me one second. And breaking news, the corn roll is nothing but the common cold. <laughs> and I'm saying <laughs> that part. <laughs> <laughs> My mom said breaking news. The, the Omarion. It's the Omarion. The Omarion is the uh is nothing but the comic code. That's what it was before they named it the, the Right, uh, Empress. Right. That's what it was. Ooh, sis, I didn't know you sent me this girl. I ain't see this girl. Thank you, what? girl. What? Said, I need to get this video though. How I get this off of here? Well, I what? sent you something. No, India. I'm going to oh. just pull it up on, hold up, okay. Yeah, I can't find it, y'all. I got so much shit, I can't find it. That WikiLeaks, I'm a, I'll am post it in. Uh, when I get a chance to, like, really dump everything in the Matriarch Express Telegram, I'll I'll, I'll add that to it, too. Um, Let me get to this second drop, though. This shit tripped my fucking head out. So, y'all remember the... Uh, the bill that they were trying to pass that I showed y'all about um, that this one here with the removal of people who ca with cases and contacts carriers all of that y'all these people have been busy this is okay wait no 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 that's not it here it is I found a whole bunch of bills this page if y'all don't follow them on Instagram please do pcs1.308 y'all go check them out assembly bill 8279a relates to adult vaccination reporting requirements assembly bill 8a8378 requires immune immunization against uh yeah that yeah with the yeah <laughs> Senate Bill S3041 permits any child who is at least 14 years of age to have administered to himself or herself certain immunizations required or recommended by law. Do y'all hear this shit? Well, Assembly yeah. Bill 8A8398 relates to limiting exemptions from immunizations. So they going after the exem the exemptions, like the uh, religious exemptions and the medical exemptions and all of that type of stuff. That's what they going after. I'm yeah, they trying to stop. They are trying to stop. Um, uh, people can't trying to say people can't use them, but right. then you going against, then you going against the constitution. Everybody need to check. Every state has their own constitution. You can't just go with the one that the, every state has its own constitution. So. So uh, when Miracle was sending out the um the exemptions and stuff, she was literally going from state to state pulling your uh your laws for that. So you will know. Go ahead, dude. My baby. Yeah, I think pretty much at this point we need to study the law books like the Bible. Yes. Know our rights. Requires not this and that not now. Now you need to really know what you yeah. really need. They gave you the Bible instead of giving you the law book. Yeah. Um, Assembly Bill A seven eight two nine requires immunization of certain post secondary students. A Assembly Bill A two two four zero relates to mandatory influenza vaccine for persons attending daycare. Assembly Bill A eight two two provides yeah. treatment. This the one that got me, y'all. Provides treatment for sexually transmitted diseases to minors without a parent's or guardian's consent. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. So y'all, I, I put the link in the chat for this, so y'all can go and check them out. Um, y'all can go and you know go read them on your own time. Going, you know, just to go and look and see. Yes, there is this some crazy shit. These people are like these people are out their mind. They sick. Really they're, they're not sick. These <laughs> motherfuckers are diabolical. Yeah. They really are empress. They are diabolical and they're desperate. And desperation yeah. cause for people to, to make You know, they don't yeah. care about knocking off those who look like them. No, no indeed. Indeed. Oh no. No indeed. The very rich had got out of uh, uh, Germany in World War II. The very rich had been escaped, including El, uh, Einstein, 
Einstein, all of those people had got out of Europe. Those were the poor and the degenerates that they were trying that they were trying to kill off. And it wasn't as many as they say either. Uh -oh. I mean, did you get the uh, first one I sent you over on Facebook to me? Oh, with um, uh, with um. Oh yeah, I see it. You want me to play those two before? Like yeah, and then just play a little of it. You don't have to, you know. Okay, well let me pause this for me. Just going because I know you're not feeling well. We can just go to get this to the UV news. Um, because I know you're not feeling well. You show it's okay. I'm not tripping, Empress, at all. Yeah, because I know you need for real lyrics. I, I, I can hear them before. Just go on and start. Uh, okay. let's try, you can do some rest. I appreciate you, goddess. I you really got some peppermint? Put some peppermint by your nose. I do. I got, I have my, uh, you know, I've been thinking, I just need, one, once this over, I'm going to sleep. That's what I really need to do. I just need to sleep. Yeah. Just need to rest myself. All right, y'all. What we've all been waiting for. Educational I, purposes. This is for educational yes. purposes. I don't know if I, yeah, I shared it. Y'all check out, go subscribe to this brother. That is actually his backup channel. Um, because they just like they fuck with us, they fuck with his channel too. They do always be taking his videos and stuff down. Yes, me a lot. Seth Rich, y'all go go look up Seth Rich. Please go look up Seth Rich. Yeah, he was he was murdered. Yeah, mm -hmm. he was murdered. Mm -hmm. He was murdered, most yeah. definitely. All right, y'all. Well, we've all been waiting for drum roll. Put your trains in the chat. <laughs> this series is dedicated to Brother Steve Coakley. No, no, you be news is not the bootleg. It's about the bootleg. Uh, 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 Parker. The Mysterious Society of Elite Negroes. Defining this group has evaded us all. Who are they? And what exactly is their purpose? When addressing this group, the most essential element to grasp about identity is understanding the society known as Boule is a predominantly black fraternity but unlike most fraternities is non-collegiate becoming a member of this fraternity is contingent upon several qualifications among the most paramount 
is excellence of performance in one's field. There are only 5,000 members of Sigma Pi Phi, otherwise known as the Boule. Since the inception of this fraternity in 1904, several dozen of the most well-known so-called black figures of the past century were and are members. It is considered a great honor to become an archon of the Boule. Members range from W.E.B. Du Bois to Colin Powell and from Kwaizi Mfume to Martin Luther King. Contrary to the perceived notoriety, the purpose for this group, however, is perversely sinister. The Miseducation of the Negro is more than just a book by Carter G. Woodson. It has been a philosophy of American colonialism unto this day. And an essential part of this philosophy is using quasi-classically educated Negroes as harbingers for the black masses. Carter G. Woodson being a prime example whom has been labeled by the establishment father of African-American history. Woodson obtained his PhD from Harvard in 1912, where only he and W.E.B. Du Bois were the only black men to achieve such at the time. And at the same point, both of these men would become members of the Boule. One would think by reading Carter G. Woodson's somewhat unapologetically black and African-centric writings that he would have been considered radical and controversial to his white contemporaries. But if it weren't for these so-called white contemporaries, the Carter G. Woodson name would have never seen the eyes of the public. Most of his opposition came from black contemporaries who saw his amalgamation of American blacks with African culture as a conflation of history. As the case may be, the narrative states, Carter sought funding in order to continue his endeavors into the establishment of a Negro-centered historical foundation. Inadequate of funding himself, he then turns to the preeminent perpetuators of Negro miseducation for financial backing, the Carnegie Foundation, the Rockefeller Foundation, and the Julius Rosenwald Foundation. These foundations were created by some of the most unscrupulous businessmen in American history, yet these foundations would fund the spurious new black intellectual movement that culminated in the Harlem Renaissance. Hearing about Harlem and going to Harlem became... Um, exciting, new, different, and people went. They went to a place that others would say, you really want to go up there. But in fact, going up there could get you the time of your life. And going into, uh, we also have to remember the early 20s before doing prohibition, everyone wants to do just the opposite of what the law says. So of course, that again, that's another reason to go to Harlem go against the grain. Women, go against the grain socially. Cut your hair, wear the short flapper dresses. Go against societal norms. Harlem was that for white America. The Julius Rosenwald Fund, for example, literally funded most of the renowned artists, musicians, authors, playwrights, and activists of the late 1920s. And many of the names associated prominently in Black American history. People like Claude McKay, Ralph Ellison, Marian Anderson, Julian Bond, W.E.B. Du Bois, Maya Angelou, and Langston Hughes were paid by the Rosenwald Foundation going all the way back to the 1920s. So these Black figures were being marketed to the masses by a small group of Jewish men as the leading black scholars in the country. This very same Rosenwald Fund first conducted the degenerate syphilis study in five southern states, 
transpiring as a result of their initial blueprint in the Tuskegee experiments. In addition, the Julius Rosenwald Foundation is responsible for the construction of over 5,000 schools, most of these schools primarily built for Southern Blacks. Why was Rosenwald so interested in helping Black people? Rosenwald himself came from an immigrant family of Jewish merchants. As a young man, he learned the family trade as an apprentice in New York and began making clothes. This led to his partnership with Sears Roebuck, who allowed him to buy shares in the company after they were having financial trouble. The company revived under Rosenwald, and he became wealthy. Rosenwald, while working as a young man, developed a close friendship with Henry Goldman, another second-generation German Jew, who was best known for Goldman Sachs, a prime brokerage investment firm that his father Marcus founded in Bavaria, Germany. Rosenwald had other powerful friends as well, who would all be instrumental in helping him and people like him become the face of simulated social reform. These men would use their millions to champion the new black agenda. When tracing the money to some of the most prominent black organizations of the past, one is left with one very common denominator. This denominator is the deception behind the miseducation of the Negro, a history signed and sealed in an African slavery connected identity delivered to you by ignorant or compromised Negroes who have been indoctrinated into a false dogmatic historical cover up. When reading the words of black scholars of the past, there seems to be a romanticized relationship between these authors and their supposed African heritage. In W.E.B. Du Bois' renowned work, The Souls of Black Folk, the reference to Africa was made nearly a dozen times. In each reference, the word Africa or African is inserted into the text to draw comparison by similarity between African and Black American culture. And consistently, in each case, Du Bois provides no credible historical background into the analytical significance of his comparison, but rather vague conjecture, leading the reader into bias presuppositions. In page 196, Du Bois makes a definitive statement. The social history of the Negro did not start in America. With just this statement alone, W.E.B. Du Bois threatens the historical credibility of his entire career of works. Understanding the original American was reclassified as African and Negro in the century prior to his birth is a reflection never echoed in his work. Furthermore, the reclassification of a people and lacking in acknowledgement of heritable indigenous rights is verifiable treachery. If Du Bois was a true historian, then he would have developed his own legitimate historical perspective and outline concerning the history of the so-called African-American. Instead, his writings are the bougie Zionist propagated social commentaries of an uppity Negro. As someone who had completed an entire database in which he had gathered census information on Southern American plantation owners and slave statistics, Du Bois never dedicated any of his writings toward the indigenous American culture that existed on the continent prior to colonialism and its connection to blacks in America. If anything, Du Bois could have been an instrument of the first American black regional beef. Instead of East versus West Coast rappers, it was Northern versus Southern Negroes. In writings that allude to the Northern Negro as progressive and the Southern Negro as a peon or pauper. His work, however, doesn't come completely without historical legitimacy, but instead narrated from the perspective of an outsider or spectator. In his book, The Souls of Black Folk, on page 48, Du Bois makes 
quick reference to the mulatto immigrants from the West Indies who immigrated to the North, whom had demanded to be considered freemen on the basis that they would seek assimilation and amalgamation with the nation on terms with other men. One of the families implicated in his text was an ode to his own ancestry. In his own words, the Du Bois family of New Haven sought to be not as slaves and not as Negroes. To be accurate, Du Bois, as the name suggests, was not American or even African for that matter. He claimed African ancestry from his mother's side. But his mother's Burghardt lineage wasn't black. His mother's grandfather was apparently a West African slave. But the Burghard lineage was definitely Anglo-Dutch. On his father's side was the lineage of French Huguenots. His father Alfred had immigrated from Haiti to New Haven. By many accounts, his father could have been of mixed race origin, as French Huguenots were often known to comprise of a mulatto class. But with this being said, Du Bois had no ancestral roots in America as did the so-called Negroes, whom had been inhabiting the land long before Eurasian contact. In fact, it wouldn't be until Du Bois was in college did he come face to face with the true plight of the Southern Negro. And accordingly, this was the first time in his life he had identified himself as being Black. David Levering Lewis W.E.B. Du Bois? Yes. He always insisted on that pronunciation. Uh, he did not like the Gallic pronunciation, though in uh, his an antecedents, he was uh, partly uh, French. Look at this nigga's lips. Look how tight this nigga's lips are. His rectum's probably tighter. As I say decisively, Du Bois. Did you ever meet him? You know, I say in the acknowledgments that I did, and I realized when, uh, after I finished uh, a lot of research, that it had to be about 1947, when I was standing with my father on a college campus in Ohio. Uh, my father and Du Bois were uh, acquaintances, if not friends, and Du Bois apparently approached and asked me what I intended to do with my life. And I was then about nine years old. I could now tell him. <laughs> A good part of my life was taken up answering that question by writing the first of this two-volume biography. Why is this nigga talking like that? He gotta be Boule. Who was he? Uh, W.E.B. Du Bois was a man who lived uh, about 95 years, and so his life really spans the 20th century and its issues and its major personalities. Uh, he was born in the north in Great Barrington, uh, Massachusetts, a small town in the Berkshires, and educated uh, elementary and high school there, and then attended college at Fisk University in Tennessee, and then took a second bachelor's at Harvard, and then went on to uh, obtain the Ph.D. Uh, in history from Harvard, the first African-American to be awarded the doctorate. And before he did that, he spent about two years at the University of Berlin. University. University. What? Where is this nigga from? I gotta find out where this nigga's from. Um, look here. It says this nigga is from Arkansas. The bullet got them niggas on that straight Buckingham, bro. Taught here and there at the University of Pennsylvania. Wrote a book called The Philadelphia Negro, which is one of the first books of urban sociology in America. And then he went on to Atlanta University, and for ten years he. Uh, superintended the uh, really pioneering studies, the Atlanta University studies, which simply took the whole gamut of uh, African-American and Southern life. And then he uh, uh, retired from, uh, from teaching uh, to the activity of uh, being editor of the NAACP's magazine, The Crisis, from 1910 to 1934. And he was, of course, also a co-founder of the National Association for the Advancement of colored people, and it was he who insisted that it be colored, not Negro, not African, not black, but colored, because he wanted the association indeed to have a mission and mandate which would address itself to the larger issue of darker peoples uh, everywhere. He was always thinking a bit ahead of the administrators, bureaucrats, and colleagues for whom the immediate and pragmatic uh, was, more, uh, was more compelling. Like, 
His lips are so tight. Talks like Dan Rather's bastard son. Both verbally and in prose, he would espouse the position. Uh, but then a few years later, he might well strike up another position, which was not if, uh, in direct uh, uh, contradistinction to the previous position, more than a shade different. And so many of his allies found themselves puzzled as in his long life, he took a variety of positions that were somewhat paradoxical. Underneath them all, though, was a principled consistency that racism must be combated, that human rights must be affirmed, and that economic justice was the, uh, the key to uh, the eventual uh, uh, accomplishment of parity and uh, the enhancement of uh, the great majority of the life chances of peoples. University. He's got to be one of the most bougie niggas I've ever seen in my life. The underlying aspect of the ascension of many of these men was the conflation of the African and black identity. While many of these men were mulattoes passing as white and even several with non-indigenous American roots. It is a matter of fact, non-American blacks were at the forefront of black Megalian deception in the early 20th century. As the quasi leading voices of black America were tokens funded by Zionist Jewish first and second generation immigrants. Du Bois, although American born, was the offspring of Anglo Dutch French immigrants. His greatest adversary, Marcus Garvey, was a Jamaican born immigrant who proposed the idea of American blacks going back to Africa as though the entire black population of America had been a product of the slave trade, as did Du Bois but nothing could be further from the truth. Du Bois has been proclaimed a Pan-Africanist by modern historians. This he and Garvey shared in philosophy, but their ideologies concerning the methods for black improvement were in conflict. These two men had numerous public spats. Perhaps Du Bois is best known for his contribution in the founding of the NAACP, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. But Du Bois wasn't the sole founder or source of funding for the NAACP. In truth, the NAACP was a predominantly Zionist white organization from its very inception. All of its officers, with the perverse hybrid exception of Du Bois, were either white abolitionists or Jewish. And Du Bois' role was merely as a public relations figurehead with no executive authority. The organization would go on to recruit several other Jewish leaders for pivotal roles within the organization. The NAACP would even recruit funds from Jacob Schiff, a German Jewish financier for the Rothschild family, whom had ironically funded communism and the Bolshevik Revolution. One of Schiff's major contentions with the Bolsheviks was their apparent anti-Semitism. But of course, the leaders of the Bolsheviks themselves were Jews. Vladimir Lenin, Leon Trotsky, even Stalin and Karl Marx had changed their names to conceal their Jewish identity and then posed as revolutionaries and anti-Semites before the world, funded by the propaganda machine that has now amalgamated itself into the NAACP. And this transmutation would not become more apparent than when Dubois proclaims himself a communist. This was a direct result of his dealings with his Jewish contemporaries, who encouraged Dubois endlessly to present anti-Semitism and racism under the same light. Although Dubois was supposedly working for the advancement of black people, he was well insulated within the ranks of non-blacks as the face for their coercive pitches to the masses. To describe him as a Marxist would be an understatement. Even after the age of 90, Du Bois was still endorsing communism, such a non-African philosophy for a self-proclaimed Pan-Africanist. 
Willie found comfort around his fair-skinned counterparts as he had done for his entire childhood. As many of the men of the boule had been mulattoes, socially accepted as white, just as the founding members of Sigma Pi Phi, Henry Minton and Algernon B. Jackson. Passing for white was obviously a theme for the inaugural class of Sigma Pi Phi, resembling more of a mayonnaise convention than a society of strong black men. Henry McKee Minton, co-founder, was the son of a mixed-race union colonel and slumlord, John McKee. McKee, a man who erected housing projects in Philadelphia for blacks migrating north after the Civil War. McKee became wealthy by exploiting black transplants to Philadelphia by exchanging deeds to their lands and property they owned in the South for rent vouchers in his Philadelphia housing projects. At the time of his death, John McKee was recognized as the wealthiest colored man in America with over $4 million and over 4,000 acres of land scattered throughout different states. He only left $50 for each of his children in his will, however, while leaving the majority of his estate and wealth over $2 million to the Catholic Church, entrusting Archbishop Patrick John Ryan as the executor of his estate. However, the will was challenged, and as a result, his son Henry McKee Minton received $25,000, which would be just under $800,000 today. Henry, as a young man, attended the prestigious Phillips Exeter Academy Boarding School in New Hampshire, whose notable graduates include some of the most influential names in 20th century American history, from Ulysses S. Grant Jr. to Mark Zuckerberg. Minton had spent a significant portion of his entire career passing for white, as did another Sigma Pi Phi founder, Algernon B. Jackson. Another mixed-race man who sported a blonde coif and owed to his Caucasian mother, who was influential in his education at predominantly white institutions, like the University of Indiana, for which she was a member of the faculty. Jackson went on to prosper as a surgeon, becoming the first so-called black surgeon at Philadelphia Polyclinic Hospital, an exclusively white hospital, and then working as chief surgeon for Mercy Hospital in Philadelphia, where he worked for 20 plus years before taking a position at Howard. He left as hospital superintendent, a position which would be filled by his boule brother, Henry McKee Minton. These two men ran in the most privileged circles in black America and sought to bind men of like qualities to an organization and to develop contacts for the improvement of their careers. Together with four other men, they founded the Boulet. In the beginning, Sigma Pi Phi was comprised of mostly physicians. One of these physicians, Robert Abel, was the brother of renowned architect Julian Abel. The Abel brothers were from a prominent black Philadelphia family whose roots lay in the establishment of the African Methodist Episcopal Church, which was the first black Episcopal Church in the United States. Although the historical narrative elaborates little on the life and times of Robert, Julian seems to have lived a more noteworthy life. Julian is an architect to some of the most venerated structures of American academia, including the Widener Library on the campus of Harvard, the Philadelphia Central Library, the Philadelphia Museum of Art, which includes the steps from the movie Rocky, the Allen Administration Building on the campus of Duke University, as well as Duke University Chapel, and most notably on the campus, Cameron Indoor Stadium. The Abel family were some of the most illustrious blacks in Philadelphia, 
Eugene Money Man Henson was another Philadelphia-based physician who joined the ranks of the light-skinned assassins. Additionally, Big Eddie Throat Baby Howard, a master Masonic medicine man in his own right, had already established a practice in Philadelphia by the year 1870. Being the first black graduate from Harvard Medical College, Howard was commissioned by the 12th Infantry of Pennsylvania, ascending to the rank of Surgeon General. To boot, Big Edwin Clarence Joseph Turpin Howard helped found Frederick Douglass Memorial Hospital in Philadelphia in 1895, the first black hospital in the city. Likewise, as he did with Mercy Hospital, along with his other Ule brethren. And you say that he was only one of three people in Ghana that had a Zill limousine. Uh, correct, yes. The Russians uh, had uh, a great admiration for Du Bois. He was uh, quite useful to them. Uh, and uh, indeed, more than that, Khrushchev and Du Bois hit it all famously in their uh, several meetings. And so the Russian ambassador was instructed to, uh, to give Du Bois uh, that, that, that behemoth uh, limousine, the Zill. Uh, so he had one, uh, the ambassador, of course, and then Nkrumah, the president of Ghana, also. He said that he got cables on when he died, uh, were sent from Mao Zedong, Zhou Enlai, Nikita Khrushchev, and that in attendance was Gus Hall, the American Communist Party. Why did they like him so much, or why did they want to pay homage to him? Well, his uh, value to uh, the... Uh, the Soviet cause was enormous. Uh, here was the uh, most impressive African-American intellectual, the man who uh, was uh, deemed widely to be the father of Pan-Africanism, the founder of the civil rights movement. And uh, now in the 50s, uh, his politics were such that, uh, uh, that the Soviet Union thought it appropriate to bestow upon him the, the Lenin Peace Prize. And then- this nigga said Lenin Peace Prize? That's an oxymoron. This nigga killed like a trillion people. 58, that was the time when Paul Robeson's passport was restored. A whole raft of people were once again uh, able to travel. He went to the Soviet Union and was treated like a, a head of state virtually, then to China with the same sort of treatment. Uh, and so uh, if the Soviet Union hoped to encourage people within the United States and elsewhere uh, to look upon uh, Marxism and uh, communism, uh, scientific socialism with increasing favor, then Du Bois was useful in that regard. Another face in this frilly flock of Philadelphia physicians was perhaps the blackest of them all, Little Dick Warwick. The Warwick family, another prominent Negro family in Philadelphia, whose roots were also tied to the abolitionist movement and the creation of the African Methodist Episcopal Church. As a result of their relationships and roles in abolitionist reformation, which included the Christianizing of blacks through the Methodist Church, this small Negro contingent out of Philadelphia was considered the Black American aristocracy. After the group's establishment in 1904, the Boulay later expanded into Chicago in 1907 and Baltimore the following year in 1910, expanding south to Memphis and later into cities like St. Louis, Kansas City, Detroit, and Atlanta. Being considered for selection into Sigma Pi Phi was contingent first upon education and then excellence in one's field. But probably the most important qualification was legacy. For two decades, the Boulé aggressively recruited all of the most prominent black families and professionals across the country for membership, hoping by which they could establish a black hierarchy. Over time, the membership became less of an excellent based requirement and more of a legacy base, which caused concerns that the standards for membership of inherited status wouldn't retain the quality of its founders whom were considered by the elite as the most excellent of men. <laughs> 
Yet, to be fair, all of the founding members of the Boule had also inherited legacy status through societies founded prior to the Boule, such as the Ugly Club in New York and the Free African Society in Philadelphia. The Negroes of the Northeast sought to separate themselves from the so-called lower-class Negroes, and the Methodist Church would make over the paupers of the plantation into the princes of the pulpit. Two of these princes of the pew were Richard Allen, founder of the African Methodist Episcopal Church, and Absalom Jones. Both of these men were born into slavery and Christianized by their Methodist overseers for the purposes of evangelizing slaves. In 1787, these men found the Free African Society, which at its inception was a religious institution, which led to the establishment of the first independent black church in America. Richard Allen was born a slave on the plantation of prominent Philadelphia politician and Supreme Court judge Benjamin Chu, who also had been a close personal friend of George Washington. Richard Allen was eventually sold to Stokely Sturges, a white Methodist abolitionist. And while under the thumb of Sturges, Richard Allen became a Methodist and began spreading gospel to the enslaved blacks. Eventually, Allen became a preacher at St. George's Episcopal in Philadelphia, a predominantly white church, but his services were restricted to sunrise sermons. This was around the time he and Absalom Jones founded the Free African Society, although he nor Jones were born free or African. At the root of their Christianization was slavery, and at the root of their slavery were men teaching them religion. But what was at the root of the men teaching them religion? Christianity wasn't inherently African, so why were these men amalgamating European philosophy with African identity? Did these men have any credible historical foundation for such claim? Both men born slaves in Delaware and taught their history and religion by whom? So what expectations should one have for Negroes who are indoctrinated by their oppressors to the point of claiming false identity to justifiably found something considered independent and black? The black bourgeoisie of Philadelphia were a product of abolitionist Christian propaganda whose purpose is to keep the black masses in a state of perpetual confusion and ignorance. What better way than teaching Christianity to house niggas and then having some of those house niggas propagate the black masses with futile race rhetoric from docile dainty Negroes who despise their own people. The mindfuckery is extremely well calculated. Create a class of uppity conformist Negroes and use your resources to champion these individuals as the brightest and best. Another one of the illustrious Philly Negroes was a man by the name of James Fortin, who was actually born free and became one of, if not the most influential of all the Negroes in Philadelphia. James Fortin had served in the Navy as a privateer during the Revolutionary War. He was taken prisoner by the British Royal Navy during his stint, but was later released after being in prison for nine months. He returned to Philadelphia and apprenticed as a ship sailmaker in a business previously worked by his deceased father, who had died on the job under business owner Robert Bridges. After the retirement of Bridges, Fortin, who had become a foreman and Bridges' best employee, took a loan and purchased the business in 1798. In 1810, Fortin invented a tool used to maneuver large cells, therefore making them easier to cut and sew. As a result, his business prospered, and soon James Fortin's business made him one of the wealthiest men in Philadelphia, regardless of race. 
In the late 1700s and early 1800s, many abolitionists and slave masters bounded together for a single master plan to solve the black problem in American society. This began the first so-called Back to Africa movement, in which black Americans, some formerly enslaved, would move to West Africa in countries like Liberia and Sierra Leone in order to colonize these lands free of racial discrimination. This idea proposed by the American Colonization Society, an organization supported by notorious slave owners like Kentucky's Henry Clay, was outright rejected by black Americans who claimed they had been American and had no African association. Quote, from the problem of slavery in the age of emancipation, Fortune had supported Paul Cuffey, a Boston shipbuilder who in 1815 transported 38 free blacks to Sierra Leone with the idea they could make a better life where not impeded by white racism. He was well aware of continuing problems due to harsh discrimination against blacks in the United States. To address community concerns and discuss potential for colonization, James Fortin worked with Bishop Richard Allen of the African Methodist Episcopal Church, the first independent black denomination in the United States, Absalom Jones and James Goldchester, to organize a meeting on this topic in Philadelphia. Their announced meeting in January 1817 at Bethel AME Church drew 3,000 attendees from Philadelphia. Hearing the strong views of this public forced a dramatic turning point for these leaders. By this time, most free blacks and slaves had been born in the United States and claimed it as their own, with their own families. At the meeting, Fortin called for a vote asking who favored colonization. Not one man said yes. When he asked who was against it, the crowd resounded with a no that made the hall ring. All claimed the U.S. as their own and wanted to gain their full civil rights as citizens. After that meeting, Fortin and the ministers strongly opposed the ACS, and Fortin later converted William Lloyd Garrison, a younger white abolitionist from Boston, against the colonization schemes. Following the January meeting, Fortin helped draft a resolution of the sense of the public which he and other leaders sent to the Pennsylvania congressional delegation. In August, they published a longer address to the inhabitants of the city and county of Philadelphia, which attacked colonization, end quote. Perhaps James Fortin was the most influential black in the entire country, and he adamantly opposed relocating to Africa, as did many of his countrymen. Fortin had not been born a slave and did not inherit his status. He was a self-made man to the utmost respect of his peers, which he earned by representing them to the opposition of their white so-called friends. Abolitionists and Quakers, along with Methodists, held themselves as the liberators of blacks in America. Among their objectives, concocting a scheme to displace black Americans from their homeland. It must be noted that the black population in America was significant prior to colonialism. The majority of the enslaved population were captured indigenous prisoners of war, whom had their land forcibly taken by pre-colonial European powers, predominantly the French in Canada and in Middle America, the Spanish in the South and the West, and the British in the East. The Virginia Slave Act imposed the right of Christian authority over anyone captured and held in bondage. Quote from the Virginia Slave Act, Hennings Statutes at Large, Volume 2, 
page 491. Jumping ahead to the middle. And whereas also those Indians that are taken in war or otherwise by our neighboring Indians, confederates or tributaries to his majesty, and this his plantation of Virginia, are slaves to the said neighboring Indians that so take them, and by them are likewise sold to his majesty's subjects here as slaves, be it therefore enacted by the governor council and the burgesses of this general assembly. And it is enacted by the authority aforesaid that all the said recited act of the 3rd of October, 1670 be, and is hereby repealed and made utterly void to all intents and purposes whatsoever. And it be further enacted by the authority aforesaid that all servants except Turks and Moors whilst in amity with his majesty which from and after publication of this act shall be brought or imported into this country either by sea or land whether negroes moors mulattoes or indians who in whose parentage and native country are not christian at the time of their first purchase of such servant by some christian although afterwards and before such their importation and bringing into this country they shall be converted to the Christian faith. And all Indians, which shall hereafter be sold to our neighboring Indians or any other trafficking with us as for slaves, are hereby adjudged, deemed, and taken, and shall be adjudged, deemed, and taken to be slaves to all intents and purposes, any law, usage, or custom to the contrary, notwithstanding. End quote. From Henning's Statutes at Large, Volume 2, page 491, 1670, Virginia Slave Act. The first so-called African-American leaders in American history were essentially Christian and Zionist installed puppets, many of them having immigrant backgrounds. These people were used as instruments to mold the black narrative of American history and even black history in general. Indoctrinated by Christian abolitionists under the guise of anti-slavery, when their true motives were to use these token blacks to propagate Christianity and Pan-Africanism. No less noteworthy are the intellectual black families of the South, similar to the Warwicks who moved north during Reconstruction in hopes to obtain prominence within the northern black aristocracy. Prestigious black landowners and businessmen from the South often enroll their children in northern elite educational institutions such as Harvard and other Ivy League schools. The completion of their degrees held an unequal quality of comparison and guaranteed their position in the social caste system. The education or rather indoctrination disparity between blacks during Reconstruction fostered the Hegelian dispute at the heart of the philosophy for black progressiveness. Two opposing schools of thought were at play. Social liberalism, a philosophy championed by the so-called Talented Tenth and the Boulet, and self-actualization, a philosophy championed by Booker T. Washington and Marcus Garvey. Each of these men gaining power and influence through their relationships with wealthy white men. This would introduce the three-headed monster of the black Hegelian deception. Integration, segregation, or separation.
On the next episode of Boule, we will investigate the philosophies of Marcus Garvey and Booker T. Washington. And their opposition to W.E.B. Du Bois. We will also learn more about the roots of Sigma Pi Phi and their connection to black fraternities and Freemasonry. That was really good. I'm going to, uh, Mama Bear said they have two more. Um, yes. I, I just sent you one, uh, Lyrica. Overall, that was really good. Yes, that was. Yeah, um, he got a whole bunch of them. They have a part two, and um, I can't remember who that was. Mm -hmm. Shared the, the, um, Thank you to whoever that was. I can't remember who it was with these. He had this did some prior to the to this one that he did. So I mean, I'm yeah. I'm fine with watching the other because those are really short from what I saw. They're not too long. Okay. What about the one I sent you? You see how long that was? Because he's really hitting on those. Yeah, let me go look at it. I you know what? Uh, I wonder. For anybody who's actually saw it, do he touch on what's his name, J. Edgar Hoover, the melanated ass? I think he is in one of them. He is okay. Yeah, that's the first one that you say. If it's the black race traitors, that's the first first one he did. You want me to play the uh Steve Coakley lecture? Black you don't have to listen to this. Uh, I, oh, that yeah, one two hours, girl. What you what you for? <laughs> I'm a, what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go and watch that and see what I'm important. And see what you want. Okay, you want me to play the other one then? Yeah, the one. Uh, yeah. The okay, I got it. Yeah, see, this is a 30, 33 minutes. We could definitely do this. Uh, fair use. This is for educational purposes only. This is to clarify why. We are in the predicament that we're in, and while they they were going up the ladder, the rest of us were going in poverty. Yeah, yeah, simple. That's the fact. Oh, uh, can I ask? Well, hold on, Lyrica. Our cook, uh, uh, uh sir, um. Uh, we're just over here sharing knowledge. I don't know. I don't get the deal of. I know right? Empress. I was just. That's why I say don't even entertain it because he was going back and forth with somebody else, and I think it was really a misunderstanding and miscommunication. But I, I didn't say anything, you know, about it. But they go, y'all, y'all just chill in the chat, please. Yeah, please just relax. Him, just let him type. We want to have like we just want to be cool y'all already know that the if, if i'm not saying that you are an agent or cook but y'all already know the agent's gonna be in here if he is so just you know just just we 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 ain't tripping that shit they can do to us uh <laughs> we want to show y'all on these youtube streets you know what yeah. i'm saying I, steve harvey look funny that's funny well. <laughs> Not not when people are part of the boule and trying to sell sell you a dream like these people wasn't behind the reason why we fucked up today. We're gonna Step give you we showing you and let's pay attention. Peace and love to the chat. UB News, special shout out to all my followers who follow me from the gram over here to the tube. I do this for you because a brother needs more than a minute. Special shout out to everybody who donates. I really appreciate you guys donating to the movement. I'm up to about $3.50 an hour, so I feel like I'm making good money. So I'm going to ask for more donations. Whenever you get a chance, drop something in the pot for IG Jesus. I really appreciate it. I use PayPal. I have a GoFundMe. Donate when you can. This is a very special video to me. It is dedicated to my brother. 
I met him once when I was in college at A&T. We actually exchanged numbers and talked on the phone a couple of times. This video is dedicated to brother Steve Coakley. I hope you enjoy. Sigma Pi Phi, the Boule. Think of it as the black elite establishment. The Boule is defined as the advisors to the king or the lower house of parliament. Sigma Pi Phi was established on May 15, 1904 in Philadelphia. This actually predates the more well-known and universally considered first black fraternity, Alpha Phi Alpha. Its founders were Henry Minton, Algernon Jackson, Big Eddie, let me get some fries with my shake, Howard, Tricky Dick Jewface Warwick, Robert, also looking like a Jewface of Bell, and Eugene, where's my money, Henson? The founder, Henry Minton, said that he wanted to model a black secret society similar to Yale's Skull and Bones. Henry Minton died in 1902 as one of the richest colored men in America. Sigma Pi Phi, the boule, the fraternity is extremely elite. 126 chapters, only 5,000 members. Many with postgraduate degrees. Notable members include Martin Luther King, W.E.B. Du Bois. Vernon Jordan, Eric Holder, Thurgood Marshall, Messi, Jesse, Jackson, Al Kanasagi, Under the Chin Face, Sharpton, Bill the Pill Cosby, and Barack Hussein Sotero. This list consists of upper echelon black Greeks as well. Imagine a minor league for house niggas, if you will. Some people ascend to boule level after acquiring a great level of professional success, but just like any fraternity, being a legacy helps. This is the wealthiest group of black people on earth, a unified squad of uppity Negroes sworn and blackmailed into secrecy by the Zionist global elite. The lower level of skull and bones Blacks were once considered three-fifths of a human. The boule is one-fifth of skull and bones, simply a tentacle to a multi-headed serpent. The Grecian Sphinx the calcified queen of riddles, the caucus counterfeit cat, the Virgilian venereal version of the authentic archetype, the fraudulent feed line. Legend states she would force men approaching the kingdom into orgies with three eagles and a female line for the purposes of creating a baby sphinx or baby griffin. If they impregnated the lioness, they were allowed to pass. If not, she would devour their souls. There was also a riddle involved. It concerns me not whether you live or die. Here is your riddle. If you knew two of them, but didn't know the other two, and they said you drove the getaway car, but you did not, why didn't you? Because I am legally blind? That is correct. You may pass. The significance of the Sphinx is to guard the king. On the Sigma Pi Phi seal, you can see the Sphinx guarding the urn. And on the urn, a circular design. 
the conventional thought, the urn is symbolic for the secrets of the dead. Who is she guarding secrets for? On May 15th, 1904, Sigma Pi Phi was born. Black people had just endured the struggle of slavery and reconstruction from sharecropping to servitude to lynching the American Negro faced a myriad of challenges in white society. But these strong black men were able to defy all odds and become highly educated physicians. In an era when reading could get you killed, it wasn't the uncompromising blue collar revolutionary Negro that would found a clandestine secret society. It would be the bold, undaunting Lionheart of the sophisticated, micro melanated, Afrocentric minds. My bad, y'all. I just wanted to pause it and give a shout out to our sister Chicka Harmony Roots. Happy Solar Return, Goddess. Happy, happy Solar Return. We love you, love you, love you, love you so much. Happy we Earth Day, you. Goddess. Happy Earth Day, my other daughter. <laughs> I, got, I got so many daughters now. <laughs> <laughs> we just wanted to tell our sister Happy Solar Return. And if y'all want any um, dream catcher, she is the one. Y'all want yes. a dream catcher, mate? Yes. Of these strong black men. The Berlin Conference of 1885 had raped Africa. Every country in Europe ran train on the motherland from Great Britain to the Netherlands to France to Italy to Germany to Portugal to Spain. All of the old Europeans who were no longer getting new slave merchandise money were pretty, were pretty pissed. pissed. I wanted to pause it again because this, this must be the first one he did. You can tell he must have did some research on his own family because his his language is very different on the one we just watched. This one here, he's saying he's you know speaking as if he's from um as if as if he's from Africa, but the other one he um sounds super early, um but the other one he sounds like he's you know his uh his language change. I love to see growth in our people. So this is, you know, this is good. So that we, we I'm been, glad we watched. Uh, again, you know, uh, for America, it's the uh, lost at home. Oh, girl, you go, it's years. He got years of videos that they kept snatching down because he, he got, got the lost at home. I'm going to be honest. I'm glad we watched that other one first because if we had to watch this one first, I probably wouldn't have been able to sit through it. <laughs> <laughs> you know how I am, Empress. Yeah. But I'm glad we watched that other one first because now it really shows his growth on, you know, where he was, you know, what where he was prior to, you know, to now. All right, y'all. That's my last time. I'm not gonna stop it no more. They decided to get together and sodomize, murder, skin, chop, grill, fillet, and serve up chunks of the motherland across the round table without seasoning. The atrocities of this Anglo pagan plunder have profited the perpetrators of deception, the criminals from the caves, the hijackers of hope, the village pillagers, the thieves of humanity for centuries. These were the men that the Boule sought to be. These were the men of skull and bones. So it is clear that the men of the Boule had an intimate relationship with Africa. During the molestation of Africa, these men were fearlessly establishing their careers in America. Henry Minton had the first black drugstore in the country 
He also became superintendent of a Philadelphia hospital. Algernon B. Jackson, another strong black brother, wrote a column called Afro Health Talk. He loved to experiment on Negroes and even suppressed results from experiments that proved chemical and genetic superiority in blacks because he was a huge fan of eugenics. Such accomplishments for these men. 80 years before integration, this man was admitted into the University of Indiana. McKinley, Roosevelt, Taft, and Wilson, the 1920s Harlem Renaissance gave birth to a new class of intellectual Negro, NAACP founder, Alpha Phi Alpha founder, and Boulay boss, W.E.B. Du Bois was at the top of Massa's poll. When all of a sudden, he started receiving opposition from within the black community, specifically from the supporters of Marcus Garvey. Du Bois supported integration and produced those results by founding the NAACP along with the help of Jewish whites and allowing them total control of the organization. However, Marcus Garvey believed in separatism and blacks governing themselves independently. The book entitled History of Sigma Pi Phi was written by Charles Wesley. Wesley himself was also a member of Alpha Phi Alpha, as well as a Prince Hall Freemason. Wesley was one of the most accomplished blacks in history, a graduate of Fisk University in 1911. He obtained a master's from Yale in 1913 and a PhD from Harvard in 1925. The boy also got his own key. And when I say the boy got his own key, he got his own key. Phi Beta Kappa key, that is from the oldest fraternal organization in the country. He was president at Wilberforce. He founded Central State. Any book written by Charles Wesley that says the history of, be prepared to fork over your lunch money. He is the foremost scholar on black fraternal organizations and Prince Hall Freemasonry. The common thread between all of the founders of the black fraternal organizations, Alpha Phi Alpha, Omega Psi Phi, Phi Beta Sigma, and Kappa Alpha Psi, is Prince Hall Freemasonry. Prince Hall, an ambitious British Negro who lived in Massachusetts, a free black who gathered with 14 other black men and asked to join Boston's St. John's Lodge, but they were rejected. After getting curbed by the wicked Hyde Masons in Boston, they persevered and were finally accepted into the Grand Lodge of Ireland. Lyrica, what happened? Girl. Lyrica, Chief Sunnell. Hold on, everyone. Give us a second.
Mm. Wait till wait till she come back in. My bad, y'all. I don't know what the fuck happened. It, it, the internet started tripping and it just cut off. That? Yeah, so I was I was kicked off. My bad, okay. y'all. It was in my bag. She's not on here. To keep it safe. Like Vixen 99, never. Like when we on our low vibrational <laughs> so bill, we able to be so low vibrational as long as we fucking want. We could do a five hour low vibrational bill and they not, they not going to have nothing to say. As soon as we come and we all just chilling and, and shit. I don't know when mommy and you come back, huh? Um, Hold on, y'all. Please smash that like button once she gets a, a video started back up. Um, always, mm -hmm. Paul, always. They always writing on us. <laughs> it's all right though. But um, he know he wants his videos out because it's educational purposes only. Right. All right. I'm about to uh start it back up, and I'm gonna rewind it a little bit so y'all can um so because I don't know how much of it was off. Uh, Y'all tripping in the chat. <laughs> Persevered and were finally accepted into the Grand Lodge of Ireland, Lodge 441. This lodge was a branch of the British military. These black masons were at best token second class members. They could only participate in rituals and ceremonies. They could even rock the dope threads but they could not earn Masonic degrees. Finally, on September 29th, 1784, under the authority of the Grand Master Lodge of England and the Duke of Cumberland, a charter was issued for African Lodge Number 1, later changed to African Lodge Number 459. Prince Hall ended up becoming a provincial Grand Master. The African Lodge became independent in 1827 and later renamed Prince Hall 20 years later. The founding members of Greek fraternal organizations were Prince Hall Masons. The hierarchy of Alpha, Omega, Kappa, and Sigma were all boule. The Grecian meaning of boule, advisors to the king or the lower house of parliament. Similar to a small council, in Greece, these would be mid-level employees of the state. Administrative, magistrative, public servants. Male members of the boule are called archons. An archon in Greece would be ruler of public service. I also found an alternative definition. For Archon. In the teachings of the mystery schools in which is implemented and practiced in Freemasonry, an Archon is an alien force that intrudes the subliminal human mind and deviates our intelligence away from its proper sane applications, i.e. a psycho-spiritual parasite. But I'm sure they're just talking about the administrative employee when they refer to themselves as Archons.
initiation rites of passage. All fraternal organizations have an initiation process. These rites of passage are extremely secretive, and these rituals involve backside blackmail, caboose abuse, butt bonding, ass extortion, rectum relationships. The ancient Greeks didn't share the same ideas about butt bonding as we do today. In ancient Greece, gay sex between men was a normal part of society. Interestingly, they didn't consider a man gay if he had relations with the same sex. As long as he took the dominant position, he would still be considered masculine. On the contrary, for the man who received infiltration. In Greece, being a bottom or a receiver of butt love was considered a great insult for any man who valued masculinity. I was dating a guy who was a Kappa. An older friend of mine, I used to go to the, when I had hair, I used to go to the barber shop and get my hair cut. And a friend of mine who was my barber asked where the guy I was dating was at. And I said, well, he is in Miami hanging with his frat brothers on stage or doing it on a cruise. And I remember he spun that chair around and said, you let your partner go to Miami and get on a ship with other <laughs> Kappas. Do you know what's going on in that ship? And I was naive. I was young. I didn't know. I'm like, he's with his frat brothers. He said, man, they're on that ship fucking. It's a, big, it's a big old sex party going on that ship right now as we speak. And I remember thinking, sitting there thinking, are you kidding me? He's all, I mean, and it all started to make sense. I was dating a guy who was a Kappa who loved hanging around his frat brothers. He's always on with my frat brothers. They would go all over the place, everywhere. Well, South Carolina, Washington, D.C. You know, he's always traveling with his frat brothers. I, I, I didn't know anything. I was very naive at this point. I just assumed these were straight guys that he was hanging with, networking. That's what he told me. But that wasn't what was happening. I would be very, very leery about dating a guy who was in any of these fraternities. These guys are manipulative, sneaky, very sneaky, very extremely sneaky. Because they can sneak off under the guise of, I'm hanging with my frat brothers. And if you're naive, like I was at one point in my life, you'll fall for the okie doke. And let me tell you guys something. I used to just think it was Kappas. But in the past few years, I've met so many gay omegas, big, muscle-bound, giant dudes just... I've been shocked. Guys, I, I, you know, and I, I know it sounds stupid, but I've been relatively shocked at the amount of gay omegas I've met in recent years. But it's sexuality. Gay folks are everywhere. But the problem I have with these fraternity guys, they're highly educated. They're smart men. They all go to college of some sort but they're stupid. They're very naive. They think they're invincible. They think that the guys they mess with are clean. This is what I've heard from them. The other, all the fraternity, I, I have sex with my fraternity brothers. They marry with other guys. You have an unprotected sex with a group of guys throughout, from city to city. You can go to Chicago, Indianapolis, D.C., Cleveland, Ohio. You're having sex with other fraternity brothers. You don't know who these guys are fucking on the side. You guys are not using condoms. You're not using safe sex. Then you got a wife at home. You're married. You have kids. You're putting her at risk. You're putting yourself at risk. Are you that naive? These guys, these guys think they are invincible. <laughs> Many people are familiar with the initiation rites of Masonic organizations like Skull and Bones, where members lay naked in a coffin and confess 
personal secrets and sexual conquest, but some may not actually know that members forcefully turd burgle initiates and engage in gay sex. These members are sworn to secrecy and with the looming ass extortion hanging over them, the motivation to stay silent is tightly packed in. These initial requirements are under strict guidelines. Homosexual and compromising acts of loyalty and extortion are all part of the deal. This is the point of no return. You may never speak of these secrets unless you want to die. Whenever a black man levels up in society, expect trunk intrusion. We call this next level butt play. Any brother you see in a dress has had to deal with some sort of pothole pillage. These are specific ritualistic practices concealed in secrecy yet maintained and externalized in various forms, sometimes in front of the masses, but mostly behind closed doors. Many of the top blacks of all time have been stabbed repeatedly in the taint drain by a calcified caucus twig. Some people even believe that this two-inch twig has been log jamming the advancement of blacks in America for nearly three centuries. Now, before a rectum inflamed gang of cues congregate outside in the parking lot, looking to square up. Consider this. While we focus on our pride and secrets, the old white Masonic order is laughing at you. Remember, the NAACP was fun and run by Jewish whites. Remember, W.E.B. Du Bois stated that these organizations were created to keep the intellectual Negro away from the likes of Marcus Garvey. Most people who pledge any of these fraternities will never get to the level of Boulay. Boulay only consists of the top tier members of any fraternity and black frats aren't exclusive. Members of Sigma Pi Phi can come from any fraternal organization associated with Freemasonry. The Boulay. Advisors to the King, the Small Council, the Administrative Psycho-Spiritual Parasite. The Sphinx guards the urn. Within the urn are the secrets that would kill, the secrets of the established order. And it is understood that these men will fall in line with the order, and in some cases, have their bowels infiltrated. These are ancient rituals of power, submission, and secrecy. civilized folk threatened to adopt so cowardly a creed in the treatment of fellow citizens born and bred on its soil, stripped of verbose subterfuge, and in its naked nastiness, the new American creed says, fear to let black men even try to rise, lest they become the equals of whites. This in the land that professes to follow Jesus Christ. The blasphemy of such a course was only matched by its cowardice. This was the statement of 1906. The NAACP, organized in 1909, added to the program of the Niagara Movement the realization that the fight for Negro freedom could not be carried on by Negroes alone, but by a national movement which united Negroes and whites. In this section of the world, they're not entirely free from this unkind, unsympathetic, and uncharitable behavior of the groups or races around us. But since man has been placed on his own responsibility, whether he be black, white, or yellow, he must act on his own account. We will not unduly whine or complain, but reason among ourselves and see what can be done to remedy this state of affairs. Life is a conflict. You have to fight your way through it, whether you will it or not. Those of us who are able to fight most stubbornly live, accomplish most, and to them go the laurels, the palms, and triumph of our civilization and world. We unfortunately have not been trained or educated in the truths of life, paradoxically so. May I say something to you to give you a true knowledge of yourself and life, so that the same glory and success attained by other men who understand themselves may be yours. 
man in the full knowledge of himself is a superb and supreme creature of creation when man becomes possessor of the knowledge of himself he becomes master of his environment the captain of his own ship the director of his own destiny the accomplisher of his own ends man should understand himself because man is full of knowledge and this knowledge is a gift of nature when mother nature created man she deprived him of nothing he was given the faculty of understanding all things around him this faculty for understanding has not been taken away from him none of his senses have been taken away from him so there is no excuse for the black man in lacking the knowledge that man is used to beautify the world and produce all that he needs for his happiness and civilization look the world over and whatever you see in it that is pleasing to man contributing to man's comfort to his needs and to his satisfaction it is but the work of man man blessed with the knowledge of himself and the understanding of all things around him if you are able to live with the knowledge of yourself and with the greater knowledge of nature, you must know what is good and what is not. You must know what is finite. You must know that which is material, physical and otherwise is at your disposal to create or otherwise use. When you think about the boule, one can't help but to draw a parallel between them and the blacks who sold their people to the Europeans. History has proven that some of the most renowned civil rights activists in American history were indeed puppets for the establishment. Take W.E.B. Du Bois. This N.Y. Boule boss, founder of the NAACP, at the moment the Garvey movement reached over a million people, Du Bois threw mulatto shade at the Pan-African prince, calling him a reckless criminal who should be thrown in jail. Du Bois lobbied with his Jewish friends who ran the NAACP. They all understood that Marcus Garvey was bad for business. All of a sudden, a huge coincidence. Garvey was thrown in jail for mail fraud. Just when you thought Du Bois could not be any luckier, the judge assigned to the case was Judge Julian Mack. He was not just the president of the Zionist Organization of America. He was a member of the NAACP along with Herbert Lehman and Chairman Joel Spingarn. Garvey was given a maximum sentence from Judge Julian Mack. He was jailed, then deported. Treachery, irony, and karma were the recipe when in 1930, W.E.B. Du Bois became disillusioned working at the NAACP by stating the organization should be run by blacks. He threatened the white leadership with an ultimatum. Either you hire more blacks or I'm gone. While at the NAACP, Du Bois wrote this. The Jew is the heir of the slave baron and daughtry. For blacks all over the South fell victim to a system of debt peonage called sharecropping, which Southern so-called Jews set up and used to their advantage to make blacks the poorest of the poor, while at the same time making a class of Jewish cotton merchants the richest of the rich. These Jews used sharecropped cotton to advance from peddler to store owner to banker to international financers. These Jews kept this economic blueprint to obtain wealth to and for themselves while they led black people to a strategy of non-economic liberalism. The leaders at the NAACP told W.E.B. Du Bois to change the word Jew to immigrant. Du Bois refused. In 1933, Du Bois divorced the NAACP. It would later come out that Joel Spingarn, president of the NAACP and close friend of Du Bois was also an FBI informant who reported back to the Bureau with information provided to him by Du Bois. Later in life, Du Bois would adapt a more Garvey-esque philosophy. The man that he had sent to jail was no longer alive, and neither was the white man's nigger. Du Bois stated in 1959, in my own country, for nearly a century and I've been nothing but a nigger ironically Du Bois moved to Africa he died in Ghana in 1963 the power 
and irony of deception. Blacks have been played as pawns in the game of imperial chess for centuries. Whether ignorantly or intentionally, token blacks are used as propagated tools by white elite establishments to control the black delegation. An alien force that invades the human subconscious mind and deviates our intelligence from our proper sane applications. A psycho spiritual parasite. Beware of fraudulent blackface organizations. Good. I can't wait. I can't wait to fix it. Yeah, that yes, I, I can't wait till next week to um see the other um parts of it. This is real good. Watch the West on part two. I was thinking we could do that on Friday. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Come you on. know, it, it shows that you know. Uh, people do strange things for a piece of chain. This is prime oh, example. So strange things. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll okay. definitely sell out. That's why I say loyalty is royalty. Therefore, niggas yeah. doing strange things for a piece of chain. The nigga said, "But the oh no," I said, "Oh man, no." <laughs> He said, so they had to take it in the butt to become boule to get them bucks, buck breaking. They yep. gotta break your butt virginity to get them buck big bucks. Yep. I'm high, don't mind me. <laughs> <laughs> That's, a That's what a lot of people don't understand. The paddle when they use the paddle on the ass when they hit them. That's called taking the wood. That's why it's called the wood. And what do they call the man's private part? The wood. That yeah. means taking it. In the butt. That's what they don't tell you. That's what that means. Any kind of way to emasculate and humiliate a man. Anyway. Right. Empress, what time you get off Friday? At 7. Okay, so we'll be here at 7.30. Okay. That'll be fine. Here All at right. 7.30 to watch. Part. So we did it backwards because I think the one we just played was the first one, but the part two that we're going to play is going to be part two to the first one that we played. And then every Friday we'll do a watch party. I like all his stuff. Like I went through while while we was listening. I went through, thanks to SBD and Radio, I went through a lot of his stuff and he have a lot of uh different series and you can see yeah. uh, I love to see the growth in the brother. You can see the growth where he had. I, that was two years ago Lyrica. I, I looked to see when he posted it but for like the last four five years he's been that we've lost at home. Yeah, you have to go look at the well, lost at home series. That's what I was about to say the series we're going to watch next after the Boule series is the lost at home series. We'll watch that one. Uh, I think it's the smartest beast in the field. Did you see oh, those? One too. They got smartest beast in the field and they have mm -hmm. lost at home. So we could go through like this type yeah. of like this. And we're gonna do watch parties every Friday. So every Friday we gonna like we're gonna come with a, a one old bill. So I've I've been kind of binging on a one and chief holiday old bill. Shout out to them brothers. They yeah. yes. the shit, y'all. Like yes, so before we before we leave, play chief holiday shit. And also, I, I emailed you something. We're going to go over House Congress Resolution 331. We all need to be familiar with that and the law, international law as well. So I sent so you something, you Lyrica, so when you look at it, you can save it for next uh, for sh next show. Yeah, okay. So we'll do Smartest Beats since Smartest Beats got a lot of... Uh, aren't they, Tashaw? They all be... That's what I was about to say before... <laughs> Oh, before I was cut off, yes. They, A1 and Chief Holiday, old bills, we are definitely, every Friday is going to be a watch party. That's what we're going to do. Yeah, so we have to understand, even though we have um, 
bypass a lot of the information because we don't went to the next level. There's still a lot of people that's coming in. Right. And see, that's what Chief will always be like, we pass this, and Chief will be like, no. Because we still got babies coming. So that's been his whole thing, reason why he was like, we have to keep it simple because we still got people that's still coming into the knowledge. So now I know, you know, it, it, and it's, it is, you know, we got a lot of people that don't know a lot of the stuff that's being taught on other channels. We already went over this stuff. Yeah. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do watch parties on um, watch parties on Fridays. And everybody who have businesses, I'm about to put my email in the chat. Please email me, y'all, like websites. Uh, Sister Soul, I, please email me anything about about your uh your health and wellness businesses everybody who have businesses email me your business because every bill i want to do a segment showcasing at least three businesses every bill to where we share like their websites we share you know the information so our people can start supporting each other so mm -hmm. um yeah i got i have my three businesses for tonight uh, i'm about to put it in the chat right now And I'm gonna um I'm gonna showcase those right now. This was a great bill. It really was. Yes, it was. Yes. I share this every uh every live, and I'm I'm gonna showcase them as a business thing. Um, thank you, God. Thank you. I appreciate you. We really appreciate you. We appreciate you all. We definitely appreciate y'all coming. Y'all have uh, lots of places y'all can be at, but y'all here with us tonight, so we appreciate it. Uh, uh, uh. I'm sorry. <coughs> oh, that's nice. This is their seat. Um. It's called Aboriginal Seeds, y'all. This is what I've been sharing. And I'm going to go through there. I'm going to just oh, go through this oh, site. The so internet is not like that. Uh, so y'all can see. my phone like that, too. I'm going to go through their site so y'all can see. Uh, but... Super C pack sale. How many? How many you get? Oh, I I am so excited! And they also put on their website um where you can do installments. Only four mm -hmm. remaining. What's in this pack, though? I want to see. Feed up to five households with Super C survival pack. Package okay. package includes seven different non-GMO seed types: basil, beets, carrots, onion, radish. Lettuce and sweet peas. Fifty plus seeds per type and five hundred plus seeds total. That's what's up. Yeah, I put the really link in the chat for the for their site, y'all. Uh, let me see. And that was two hours. That's not bad. It's not bad at all. The next business I, we're going to showcase is, uh, where is it? Yes. We are 2am.com. Mm -hmm. This is Southwind. Yes. Electric got Goddess. Yeah. Power to 2 a.m. <laughs> yeah. They got a variety of things, so check them out. Y'all check them out. And just to show you what some of the stuff they have, my fa this is one of my favorite shirts I wear all the time. I stole it from my mama. Thank you. <laughs> key bearer. That's my shit. Because mm. we all are key bearers. Yes, I love that shirt. We have to get another one and stop Lyrica from getting my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah y'all check them out i'm gonna put the link in the chat 
t-shirts, shoes. Oh, Chief Holiday, you but but what why your shoes seven hundred and fifty dollars? The hell? I ain't got I like them shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm shoes now, Chief. Hold up now. This is my first time seeing that. What is really going on? No, no, that is now now, Chief. Where Chief at? Where is Great. he? Leave Chief, Chief alone. Let Chief sell his shoes, girl. I would like to buy a pair, but you already know $750, girl. Look, I, <laughs> I could buy like four or five pair of shoes for me and my fucking children for $750, Chief. Now, nah, God damn. <laughs> I want to support. But I didn't have a girl. He's a boat. <laughs> he's a boat. And he got to put them on fold, fold. He got fold limbs. He got to put them on. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Well, look, for those who can afford them $750, and I ain't saying I can't afford them, but I ain't never paid in my life over $200. He said they ain't not paid you. Girl, I just don't do that. He, he said, said those are not out yet. yet. Okay, got you. Got you. Chief. We gonna have to talk behind the scenes, bro. I guess Chief said these niggas out here buying Alexander McQueen's, and I get you, Chief. I, I am look, I am with you, God. I get it. I'm just, <laughs> right, like, uh, uh, am I gonna be like Jesus and, and 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 walk across the, the water? That's all Listen, I want to know. We gonna fly, girl, with them. I'm not one of those. We gonna I take like flight. Children and shit. I don't buy that type of shit for my children. So he said they will drive to the first. I'm not one that spent all that kind of money. Uh, like I don't buy Al Alexander McQueen. That bitch don't get nothing from me. Motherfucking good. None, none of the people they don't get nothing from me because I used to buy. Uh, I used to spend 150 on a pair of uh, tennis shoes, but since Rainbow Fashion came out and they got all these little cute tennis shoes, they don't got no oh, name. That's, that's what I said. So for the people, who, <laughs> for the people who 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 do buy purchase, you know, and, and spend that kind of money on stuff, y'all should definitely be uh. You say seven fifty plus tax, baby. <laughs> he said, "Don't forget." I the feel your team. He I said, feel you. He said, "Do not forget the plus tax, my yes. girl." <laughs> I feel your team. Supreme chief, the, the supreme chief tools. I know that's motherfucking. Well, what, right, what about <laughs> India's not tax chief? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my God. goodness. That was funny. I wasn't expecting to see that. Y'all know me. That was like real life, uh, right there action when I saw that shit. <laughs> no, boy. 50. But I, I, I encourage y'all, oh. y'all, uh, Aboriginal men that can afford it to go on and buy y'all okay. a pair. Y'all better go. Please do support if it. Buying Jordans. If you were buying Jordans now, you pay for this nigga to uh, goddamn it all. Build Wait, a whole air fryer. Now, don't you tell me that I'll spend that 750 for that motherfucking air fryer. Y'all don't know about that air fryer. I love me an air fryer, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and don't you tell me it come with an air fryer, Chief. Now, don't you do that. Don't you talk. I look, wait, let me pin that message. Chief said comes with an air fryer, god damn it. What's the size, Chief? <laughs> what's the size? <laughs> Why <are> you laughing? <laughs> I'll say, what's the size it comes with? God damn it. <laughs> I, by, you know how I am about that air fryer. I love ball. them air fryers. I put some I live fries by. in the air fryer and it shook them motherfucking fries back like I fried them bitches just now. <laughs> and look, so dear Marshall, priority Yes, I got a family to feed. I got to feed my children them seven hundred fifty dollars shoes, but I can show sure enough cook a mean motherfucking meal <laughs> in the air fryer, baby. Don't you play with me? Thank you. 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 Um, the, thank you sister so so what the business that i was gonna the other business that i was gonna do i can do that next week and i'll just uh do yours chief said them bitches come with an air fryer now hold up wait god damn it now hold i got up, my laugh tonight y'all now yes who are you laughing at me mom? Oh, oh yeah y'all crazy <laughs> 
<laughs> motherfucker. Every time y'all take a step, they're gonna say, Where my shit? <laughs> <laughs> Share my shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, it's a great deal, y'all. We it's, get we, we gotta, it's a great time to be alive, sure especially know who you are. Tapping in, we had tapped exactly. in. All right, one more, one more <laughs> business, guys. And AK Randall's na natural nature. It's my type of shit right here now. Up my alley. Y'all can see the screen, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. All right. Let me get back to it. All right, here we are. View our products. All products are made with the best quality and natural ingredients. <laughs> Pain away oil. Mm. Oh, Empress, that pain away oil. You hear that? <laughs> exactly, because I so need it. That look like plantain. Is that plantain? I look like a picture of plantain. That's one of my favorite plants. In business, <laughs> Empress, we can Leo say, check out the YouTube channel Indigo Traveler. Okay. I'm gonna put this link in the chat, y'all. Y'all go check Sister Soul's store out because we need this type of stuff in the times that we're in right now. They are spraying, um, like yeah, trails. they yeah. spray like crazy. They are spraying. And so like many people crazy. has gotten the so-called Fauci uh, mist. Fauci. No, the mist, the Fauci mist. Well, the Fauci mist. The Fauci. That's, yeah. that's what C O V I D is. How the Fauci mist? Oh, I like okay. that, man. <laughs> the Fauci <Okay>. mist. <coughs> mm -hmm. He need to no, be a Tim Paul. He was speaking my language. I don't want the chicken sam, the Popeyes chicken sandwich for half price. Give me that motherfucking air fryer, cause then I can make my own Popeyes chicken sandwich in that air fryer. <laughs> Uh, y'all don't know y'all saw that was genuine happiness. <laughs> <laughs> that was genuine happiness when he said it come with an air fryer. That was genuine happiness. I said I'm gonna go buy me one, Erica. I want to oh, get me one. Yes, Girl, if it's you me love me. It, I love it. Love. When I say I love you would never warm your food in the microwave ever again. Like it'd be no, so we don't know no goddamn Alexander McQueen. That's why I say if they could buy Alexander McQueen, <laughs> they could definitely buy. Supreme Chief, Chief uh, yeah, okay. I told him about me up here. Watch, <laughs> watch, watch my smoke, baby. He said it come with an air fryer. Y'all don't know. Air go, I like that. Go, go, go. Y'all, y'all made my night tonight. I really was not feeling well, but I was like, no, I'm, I'm, we still, Empress was like, you know what, sis, let's just, no, fuck it. This is what we here for. Yeah, that, vi that, that video was amazing. Both of those videos. Thank you, Vixen99. I'm so glad you posted that in the chat. Let me come and snatch that again, because I thought I saved it. That's the WikiLeaks. Look at Vixen99. He shared the, um, the WikiLeaks, um, with uh, with all of the dump, y'all. If y'all want to go down a rabbit hole, that is definitely a rabbit hole to go down. Like for real, for real. <laughs> Chief Alex, Day, David Bell said you got dope man money shoes. Bring them to Detroit. They just might move just because of the price. <laughs> Thanks. I so appreciate y'all. Peace, love, and light. Empress, you want to play another song before I play my outro music? You know, you know our outro uh, music is our. If you know, know this, uh, I play that song every week. Huh? You know, I love my reincarnated. Okay, you want me to play that first? I got uh, he said, "What is the link uh, to him? Uh, you talking about to Chief Holiday? That's who I am. Chief, put it in the chat for him. I'm about to put it in the chat right now. I got it up. Okay." We're gonna play two songs before we go and 
Peace, love, and light to everyone. Uh, we'll be back Friday. Chief, yes. I'm gonna be calling you because we need to talk about this air fryer. She hold on me. Or do we you want to do it Saturday, Lyrica? What? Uh, the um. Nope, I want to do the watch party on Friday. Oh, okay. I got to work. Why I want to do it on Friday. So you have to work. Mm -hmm. You have to work. Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, doing, uh, I'm doing Friday and Saturday as well. Okay. All right. We can do, I mean, we can do something else on Saturday. Um, But mm -hmm. that uh, that watch party, every Friday, oh, yeah. we're doing a watch party. Every Friday. Okay. Every Friday. Every Friday. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you laughing at me? Yes. <laughs> Every Friday, God damn it. <laughs> I, I, I know you're pressing it. This is the oh, you, it, huh? <laughs> Every Friday. 7 30. Yeah. My girl, get off at 7. 7 30. Meet us here. Be yes. us here. Don't meet us here. Okay? That part. Oh, and I want to say that was a great interview with Threads 3000, man. Yes, Sister Soul. Well, Shout out to Sister Soul. That was we, we're going to do I'm something big, bro. With this indigenous community, we could do a farm and have all those people perform, man, and we have something yeah. really big. We're going to work yeah. on it. I said that we, we have to bring that frequency. That, my, mm -hmm. That's something for behind the scenes, too. We're we, yeah. we, we working on it yeah, behind you know, the scenes. Yeah, we got to keep that because, you know, people... Got that, that, that was going to be a call. I had a call with one of the brothers yesterday already about it, and two brothers was getting a phone call from me tomorrow. Chief Holiday, you one of those brothers. That I've been, been manifesting it, baby. About, about You've been tomorrow. manifesting it. Ancestors uh -huh. are telling us. And I, no, I love no, you guys. You Great you night. Man, this motherfucker. <laughs> yes, 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 Empress. He got a whole new oh Empress. We definitely gonna have to just King Azir put a whole new thing out four months ago. So he got a lot of songs, a lot of new songs that we definitely gonna have to start playing them. Okay. But I wanna hear uh in oh, I, mean, you know I already know what you want here, sis. I you know I got your back. You know I got you, girl. I got, I got you, girl. Yeah. It's been a long time coming. But we here. Oh. Choose a side, you go against me, that's like suicide. Sometimes just to find the truth, you gotta lose your mind. Using time to my advantage, I understand that everything's manifested in the way that I planned it. I'm still standing when the smoke clears. Blood, sweat, no tears. I came from the bottom where nobody know what hope is. They ain't freeing they self or achieving they will. So if they don't support me, they don't believe in they self. Like some reflection. You get the message, it's introspective. So if you search for hell or heaven, it's all connected in your brain. All kind of spirits live on this plane. Some are bad, some are good. Which ones you gon' entertain? Cradle legacy to gang. I put my heart in this set. Racists hate our skin tones. They look at dark as a threat. That's why these hateful motherfuckers keep their palms on our necks. How wool, skin of bronze, but we got in the flesh. Just follow the sets. It's time to reveal revelation. We still being hated and we still separated. We built the whole nation, but ain't get no reparations. What? Well, fuck a hand out if you want it, you better take it. This matrix been to us labels. Kill us, lock us in cages. We gotta move through these mazes. Nobody coming to save us. Uh, take off your chains. Everything you ever knew was ours. Like Lex and Hughes, like you, we knew. Yeah, you was power. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Take your shit back. Yeah, take off your chains, everything you ever knew was ours. Like Langston Hughes, like Huey Newton, yeah, he was power. A true king born to rise from an infant. I do it for the lives that then died in the system. There's war outside for your mind and your spirit. Whatever's telling vibes, telling lies to your vision. I'm indigenous, God body, strong and militant. And my squad is infamous, we come but diligent. Immortal in combat, so it's hard to finish him. He's powerful, you gotta be a god to sit with him. I'm tapped in, my vessel's a voice for the ancestors. From back then, who want the word to demand better? I put my pen to the pad, start spinning what's real. And when I speak, that should be giving them chills. I gotta tell you about your power. Time to soak up your knowledge so you unlock it. And rise like the sun, we pushing past the horizon. 
They watch it from the side, but they don't want to collide Cause who can stop nobody, nigga? Nobody, straight heavyweights These bronze bombers gon' detonate Will we elevate from hell's kitchen to heaven's gates? We fighting hard times, dog, so let me set it straight You ain't got a strong mind, then nigga will resonate I don't feel cowards, your willpower is your real power We've been building they dreams so long, it's time to build ours Cause shit won't change if we all stay the same So if it all falls down, we should all take the blame, nigga I seen the pain, I done witnessed the flaws So if you don't pay attention, you won't get what you are My spiritual energy was sent from the stars Now bitch, I'm lying from the temple of God Incarnated, nigga My spiritual energy was sent from the stars Now bitch, I'm lying from the temple of God Incarnated, nigga King, crunch. King, Ooh, baby. Baby. Don't make me want to go out and just goddamn it, scap all day. <laughs> <laughs> That's the link for that one in the chat, y'all. Yay. This is our last one, and we out, y'all. Again, peace, love, and light. Thank y'all for coming. Yes. Ride on the train with the matriarchs. Choo, choo. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, really. you know. Chee holy, you Love you we all. We will see y'all on Friday. 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 Yeah, Friday. Please love the light.